live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Welcome back to Barcelona, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. Steve Tramack is here. He's the director of engineering within big data, within converged systems. Uh, Steve and I met at Hadoop World uh, in October. Yes. And we had a really interesting confidential conversation, which we can now talk about Correct. a little bit. You guys are thinking about the big data infrastructure problem uh, differently, based on what customers are telling you. So why don't we share with our audience what sure. you guys have been thinking about. Yeah, so as we started talking to customers about big data challenges and, and kind of next generation infrastructure, we kept hearing the same things over and over again. We talked to customers and say, you know, I've got this converged infrastructure for all my line of business apps, and then I have these Hadoop clusters that are popping up kind of around the periphery of my data center, and, and when one pops up, another one pops up, and oftentimes with the same data, trying to move data back and forth between them is a challenge. Um, we're also hearing that, that from a workload perspective, um, particularly as Hadoop evolves and customers are looking more at, at, at real-time type workloads and SQL on Hadoop, that there really wasn't an optimal single workload platform for Hadoop, right? MapReduce workloads are very different than Spark. Uh, so, so we started hearing these kinds of things and looking at trends like cheaper uh, commodity fabrics, 40 gig Ethernet, uh, is is now uh, uh, a bit of price reduced, so it's 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 only marginally more than 10 gig Ethernet and some workload optimized server. So we we started looking at what if we break some of the common perceptions and the fact that when Hadoop was first released, 100 megabit networks were kind of the, the prevailing uh, uh, network, and the whole concept of, of aggregating compute and storage may have been applicable there. But we said, well, what if we what if we split compute and storage and not do it in a proprietary sense, but do it what's enabled by Yarn, uh, the fact that we can have multiple workloads accessing HDFS, and, and set up a, an environment where an asymmetric Hadoop cluster can go, where we have storage optimized nodes running HDFS, and compute optimized nodes running Yarn and MapReduce and other services. Okay, so Yarn and sort of the next gen of, of Hadoop is, is, was a critical factor in exposing this problem, right? right? So let's, 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 let's maybe unpack that problem a little bit more. So, Typically, I remember Jeff Hammerbacher when we interviewed him in the early days of, of, of Hadoop and Cloud Era. He said, when I was at Facebook, what I really was focused on passionately was I didn't want to put all my data into this container, this million dollar box. And he made a face when he said it. Right. So I set out to change the way the world stores data. Right. And so, that led to a bunch of commodity components and a bunch of batch jobs working on those. So right. where have we come from there and, and what drove that? Well, the, the ecosystem continues to evolve, right? We see other, other projects that are spinning up, leveraging the fact that HDFS has become kind of the, the drop box for big data, right? It's the, it's the common landing place where everything, mm -hmm. all data lands in HDFS and multiple apps and multiple workloads are now accessing. Somebody said to me, Hadoop is the new tape. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, right. So, it, so we've got all this, uh, uh, all, all the, the, all of a sudden, instead of just batch, we're seeing real-time processing, we're seeing streaming, we're seeing uh, a, a lot more SQL on Hadoop. For instance, we just released the Vertica SQL on Hadoop that runs right. directly on the Hadoop nodes. Uh, as organizations start to aggregate and, and uh, assimilate the data and, and analyze it, and they're starting to see business value from this, all of a sudden now we're moving from just batch into, into multiple workloads. And those workloads bring uh, multiple copies of the same data if they're in siloed clusters, which is kind of the, the traditional way to deploy it. Uh, and they also bring different workload types. Yeah, so again, you mentioned YARN, which allows you to do much more things in, yeah. in parallel. It stands for yet another resource negotiator, so for you geeks out there. Um, and, and then Spark, doing things in real time, bringing SQL sure. and opening up the, the expertise base right. of people who can actually now code and take advantage of, of, of Hadoop. So now you're getting a lot more diverse workloads. So people want to scale compute independent of, of storage. Right. And that's really the problem that you're solving. Right, and that's what we're, that's what we're doing. In fact, we, we talked with uh, 
uh, Hortonworks and Clive Aero and Mapar about this about eight months ago. And Hortonworks said, by the way, we're working on a feature for the Apache trunk called Yarn Labels. And what Yarn Labels do is it, 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 they set up administrative groups of nodes so that you can run just a certain set of yarn containers in a certain group or with a certain label. Uh, so what that now enables us to do Right, is is we can specify, I have these nodes over here that have big memory. I'm going to call that my big memory group. I've got these nodes here that my map produce uh, a set of, of nodes. I've got these nodes over here that are my SQL of group nodes. And these yarn labels now enable you to run multiple workloads on compute against the same HDFS tier and elastically re-slice. So nighttime, you can have, do all your batch jobs to prepare your data for the next day. You can, by compute nodes, if you have an architecture where compute and storage are, are, are separate, you can do that. If, if, if compute and storage are, are aggregated, now all of a sudden you have to repartition data every time you, re, you reallocate resources. Uh, but if you can disaggregate compute and storage, now we can re-slice the compute nodes uh, based on time of day, based on resource. We can have batch at night and then more real time in SQL and ingest during the day. And, and the same nodes. Uh, this architecture, it's, it's, it's called the HP Big Data Architecture, so we've just, um, uh, it's we've been blogged about today, uh, and uh, we're showing it here at, at Discover. We have reference architecture that will be public uh, within the week. Uh, it, 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 it leverages our Moonshot, highly compute, uh, dense compute nodes, and our SL4540, highly dense storage nodes, uh, all running Hadoop, so it's an asymmetric Hadoop cluster, uh, and a standard, Standard open source to do. Okay, so uh, I, I want to dig into the product, uh, but before we do, I just want to sort of restate the, the problem a little bit if I can. So you've got all this diversity going on, um, all these mixed workloads, and I'm going I'm to tie it back now to Converge. you got Converge in your title because Converge systems are these blocks of infrastructure that you put in, and you can't scale them independently. And in the Hadoop world, data's coming in so fast, right. work, people get ideas, the data scientists, oh, let's spin up you know, some new clusters, the characteristics of that cluster very well may be different. Right, and exactly. so, so tie it back to the converged problem. Yeah, so, uh, exactly, in fact, we, um, uh, that was a, a challenge with, uh, with our, we had a Hadoop appliance, and, and the, the biggest piece of feedback we kept hearing from customers is, uh, I love the, the fact that there's a, you know, a, a, a block that's supported together, that's easy to deploy, but my workload is slightly different. And, and now I think particularly with the ecosystem uh, being much richer from a, a real time and a, a streaming perspective and, and SQL on Hadoop perspective, uh, that's even changing more. So this concept of, of uh, you know, convergence of compute and storage resources makes a lot of sense. But this ecosystem just at the pace it's moving just demands flexibility in no type. Okay, now let's dig into the product a little bit. You got sure. Moonshot base. Talk about the components. And yeah, so the, the, this is a reference architecture. It's not a converged system. It's just a it's a reference architecture that we've released, and it's um, we're running uh, Yarn and MapReduce and compute functions on our Moonshot uh, nodes. For those that are familiar with it, it's it's a 4.3U chassis. It's about that big and it has 45 microservers in it. So each server is an Intel uh, uh, E3 Xeon processor. It's a Haswell-based processor. So it's, it's very similar to the, the, the processor you'd find in a really high-end notebook, an i7 notebook, but it's, it's a Xeon, E3 Xeon processor. So it's a four-core proc. It's got memory, 32 gig of memory. It's got an SSD, 480 gig SSD, and dual 10 gigabit NICs. And it's super dense packaging. Right, 45 of them in that space. And then the storage block is uh, our SL4540. Uh, in the same packaging, we have two servers that each have 25 disks. So we have a, we have 200 terabytes of storage in 4.3U. And with that architecture, um, you know what we're finding is from a density perspective uh, and a power perspective, when you just run HDFS on, on those nodes and pull some of the map reduced and, and local file system access off of those nodes, they run very efficiently. In fact, we're running faster IO tests, DFS IO, remotely than we do in, with everything on the node. Really? And, and now, where does Flash fit in? 
to the architecture. So, so Flash, Cloudera did some testing, and they looked at, for instance, for Shuffles, the map output file and sure. the local file system access. If you could put that on Flash, it would accelerate uh, Shuffle performance. So in the moonshots, each cartridge has a 480 gig M.2 stick. It's a next generation SSD. So we're using that, we're, we're installing Hadoop there, we're installing uh, uh, node managers there, and, and Yarn and, and MapReduce, and we're using that for all the file system access. So, so we're gaining the benefit of Flash in that cartridge in a, in a, in a very cost-effective manner, and then we're using spinning media for, for the primary so, stick. So talk about, Steve, how you came up with this idea and then I want to find out what customers are saying once they've seen it. Yeah, so, so this is, uh, 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 Greg Battis uh, is our, our chief technologist on big data, and, and Greg has a, a kind of a long history in, in the parallel database world, uh, and uh, you know, these concepts are very similar to what, in fact, if you look at Cray, the Cray architecture, yeah. they had all these little compute uh, blocks and storage blocks. So HPC is, coming to big data. That's exactly yeah. right. Th th these concepts have been around for a long time, and, and really it's, it, this was at the impetus of our customers saying, we're trying to figure out how to disaggregate compute and storage and do so in an open standards kind of way so that we have the flexibility to scale out compute, to change the ratios for workloads to demand it, and have, and, data deduplication, so, so we don't have three Hadoop clusters all with the same data uh, because they have either different departmental needs or different workload needs. Okay, um, now give me some sense of what the customers uh, have been saying. I mean, I've shown it to, what, a handful, a dozen? Uh, over uh, um, several dozen at this point. Really? Several dozen. Uh, been busy this week. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, actually this week alone has been pretty busy. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, we, we've, over the last six months, we, we, we probably briefed um, uh, 40 or 50 customers. What are they saying? Uh, they, they are, uh, we're getting comments like, I've been trying to figure out how to do this for 18 months. Uh, customers are saying this, you describe what my problems are, and, and, and I, you know, this is a, you know, this is we've been looking for a way to do this kind of an architecture for big data, but but we, uh, particularly around the flexibility and, and being able to scale workloads independently and not have to uh, uh, re redistribute data, uh, that's been, that's been the, the the primary feedback. So we're currently, again, we just came, uh, uh, we just released the the, uh, the demo and the blogs this week. Uh, everything has been under, under uh, confidential disclosure at this point, as you know. Uh, but we're starting to work with customers now on, on some live POCs and pilots. And, so why the decision to show a little leg now? Just trying to learn? Um, no, I, well, actually, are you worried that you know the competitors are going to say, "Oh, I can do that too"? Or? I, you know, it, it's it, it coincides with uh, the release of yarn labels and HDFS tiering in. Works uh, too, mm -hmm. right? So these are capabilities. This architecture is really kind of designed for uh, to leverage that capability. With HDFS tiering now, you can specify different classes of storage uh, within your Hadoop cluster for really hot data uh, versus really cold data. And and this kind of architecture now lets you build, uh, deploy purpose-built servers for each. Of so you teams. want to give developers visibility on that, right? And take advantage of that momentum in the open source community. E everything, that we, and we're working very closely with the server team here. And, and uh, everything that, we're, that, that we've, we've been doing is shipping now. But totally different mindset in the open source world right. as to how you release certain pro products anyway, right? I mean, in the old days it would be, okay, sackable offense if anybody leaks anything about this, all emails are secured, <laughs> right? It's, yeah, it's, no, uh, it, it, this is, uh, uh, I think it's probably more in line with, with well, first of all, kind of with, with the, the open source community and uh, the fact that the servers and all the, the, the HP products are shipping and we're not doing anything proprietary here means that, frankly, anybody could go out and build this if they, if they understood what was available to them uh, within, within... Well, you have some advantages and, you know, <laughs> Moonshot is key. Uh, Moonshot is key. Well, the, really the, interesting use case for Moonshot. The density that we're getting from this architecture, a full rack of this Hadoop performance equivalent is two and a half racks of Moonshot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, now, can we expect going forward uh, 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 to see other sort of solutions around this? You mentioned Vertica before and yeah, other parts of the HP Yeah, we're, we're doing additional reference implementations right now. We, we have documents for Hortonworks and Cloudera map bars coming shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're also uh, looking at things like, um, like Spark, uh, HBase, uh, Vertica, obviously Vertica SQL and Hadoop. Uh, and, and, and
and a number of other workloads as well. And, and we're going to be driven by customers. As we, it really comes down to as we're talking with a number of customers. There, uh, we, we have a number that have, have fortunately said they'd like to be a design partner with us and, and kind of model their workloads in this architecture. So we'll be driven by, by what the community is. Uh, Again, very interesting world we live in, right? You mentioned three competing distros. You guys have an investment in Hortonworks, and yet you understand the need to uh, you know, accommodate others, and it's an open world. It's 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 relatively straightforward to do. It takes resources, but but it's something that you've, you've got to do if you want to play in this world. So, you guys are thinking about it the right way. So that's great. I'm really excited about this, and and hope to learn more, Steve. I really appreciate you stopping by the queue Thanks, and sharing Jason. this with our audience. You bet. Dave. Thank you very much. Thanks All for right. your time. Good deal. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is the Cube. We're live from HP Discover in Barcelona. We'll be right back.